Okay, in this video, I want to give you more details about sulfur oxides and SOX emission. So, let's see if we have sulfur content of organic fuels, how much SO2 we can produce. So, all organic fuels used by humans, fuels uh, means oil, coal, natural gas, peat, wood or any other organic matter contains some uh, sulfur fuels like wood have a very little amount of sulfur for example it can be 0.1 percent or less on the other hand something like coal it has very high amount of sulfur content so it's usually from 0.5 to 3 percent So oil generally have more sulfur than wood, uh, but less than coal. So if you can say that we have coal has lots of sulfur, then we have oil, that, then we have wood. If we burn the fuels that has sulfur, the contained sulfur will mostly form sulfur dioxide. So here we have the S in fuel. When we have combustion, it means that it's going to react with oxygen and it's going to produce SO2. So in natural gas, most of the sulfur is in the form of H2S, which is easily separated from the other constituent of gas. So as you see here, we can, by just se some separation methods, we can remove H2S from natural gas. So it is very easy to separate um, sulfur from natural gas by some desulfurization methods. On the other hand, when we are dealing with oil or liquid petroleum, and also in oil shells and tar sands, the sulfur is chemically bound, combined or chemically bound with the hydrocarbon compounds and it cannot be removed just by separation. So we need to do some reactions too. So we need to break the chemical bonds. So we will have some desulfurization methods to remove that sulfur content from the petroleum. So as we reduce the sulfur content of uh, oil or natural gas or petroleum we can say we have a sweeter gas or sweeter uh, oil so here you can see the US emission estimates for sulfur dioxide production so as you see here you have different sources of SO2 production or emission coal combustion Utilities, industrial and commercial, subtotal is around 71%. Then we have oil combustion, consists of utilities, industrial, commercial, more than 8%. Then we have in so some other industrial processes, such as chemical and light, metals pr processing, petroleum and related. It's going to be more than 6%. And vehicle emissions on road and off-road together is less than 7%. And all other sources is going to be a little bit more than Seven percent. So as you see here, the vehicle vehicle emission of sulfur dioxide is not very high because um, usually these petroleum refineries and petrochemical complexes they remove the sulfur content of gasoline. So the gas that we are using for cars has much less amount of sulfur in the formula. And here is the trends in u.s emission of sulfur oxides in terms of tons per year so we have 1970 1980 1990 2000 2008 so for stationary fuel combustion so as you see here it is reduced by something more than 17,000 tons per year to something like 7500 tons per year so it is less than 50 percent Industrial processes, as you see here, we reduced it again because we can remove sulfur content. So for industrial processes like chemical and light products, metal processing, petroleum related and other industries. So this year for somewhere around 600, it is reduced to 250. Mobile sources on road and off road or non road mobile sources. We have 273 all the way to 64 or 278 to 456 
So as you see here, because we have more technology, better technology to reduce the sulfur content of gasoline, so we have less amount of sulfur. But on the other hand, for non-road mobile air pollutants or air pollution sources, because we using some fuel that are heavier and usually heavier hydrocarbons have more sulfur content. And if you have more sulfur content, it is usually more expensive to remove the whole thing. So as we increase in terms of usage of these non-road mobile sources or non-road uh, transport transportation vehicles, we're gonna reduce. We're gonna have increasing SO2 production or SO2 emission. <clears throat> the miscellaneous is almost const constant. So in total, from 31,000. It is reduced to 11,000. It's something like one third now during the last 40 years. And after that, we have SO2. What is SO2? It is a colorless gas that can be detected by taste and smell in the range of 1,000 to 3,000 microgram per cubic meter. A concentration of 10,000 microgram per cubic meter, it has a pungent, unpleasant odor. Sulfur dioxide dissolves readily in water present in the atmosphere to form sulfurous acid. So sulfurous acid is H2SO3. So please don't get confused with sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So this one is, so when we have SO2 and it reacts with H2O, it is going to produce H2SO3. So about 30% of sulfur content in the atmosphere is converted to sulfate aerosols or acid aerosol which is removed through wet or dry deposition processes. The more sulfur content in the fuel, the higher level of SO2 emission we have. SO2 is mainly formed when the sulfur elements are oxidized by O2 as we had it before. If you remember we said for example coal has more sulfur content comparing to um, petroleum so it means that when we burn them we're going to produce more SO2 sulfur dioxide is a gas it is invisible and has a nasty sharp smell it reacts easily with other substances to form harmful compounds such as sulfuric acids sulfurous acid and sulfate particles so about 99% of sulfur dioxide in air comes from human sources so as you know we have for all these air pollutants we have two different sources some sources of natural sources of uh, sulfur oxides production and some of them are human made or anthropogenic sources of air pollution so 99 more than 99 percent of sulfur dioxide in air comes from human sources so what are the sources we have oxidation of dimethyl sulfide, volcanic emission, fossil fuel combustion, mineral ore processing, and chemical manufacturing. So volcanic emission is one of those natural sources of sulfur oxide emission. The rest is human made. So what are things how we can control it? Atmospheric chemical reaction to produce sulfuric acid, dissolution in cloud drops, and surface water, and deposition to sea ice, snow, soil, vegetation and structures. These are the natural sinks. In future, in other videos, I'm going to show you how to control sulfur oxide's emissions.